Right, so you're diving into your first lower league save in Football Manager, and you've looked at your finances and thought, oh God, there's nothing there. What do I do? How do I sign players? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you some little tips and hints on how to make the most of being in the lower leagues and make some extra money. So let's dive in and have a look at some easy hints and tips on how to make some easy money whilst playing in the lower leagues of the Football Pyramid. So it is day one in your new side now. We're managing Hereford, of course. We're in the Vanarama National League North, which of course is a very built-up league of 24 teams, all fighting for that top spot of automatic promotion while the rest get playoffs. But if you want to get that one step ahead of the other teams in your division, you need to make some money fast to try and reinvest in this club and build your way up the footballing pyramid. So one of my early go-tos is always going to your staff and seeing are you spending a lot of money on stuff you don't really need at this level? You can see straight away, you have one assistant manager, one head performance analysis, two coaches, which is fine. Again, there's not a lot here in terms of stuff you would get rid of. One physio, one physio is probably enough really, but I prefer two personally myself. So there's no one really here that you can let go of and try and save a little bit of money whilst in the lower league. So the next little hint would be then to go into your squad and have a look at your team, try and work out do you need so many players at this level that you can get rid of some that are actually earning some pretty big money early doors? I mean, we can go into wages here. We've got a few players here, £600, £500. Are these going to be on your first team plans this season? Do you have a lot of players in similar roles? I mean, you can see here, we have Zach Lilly, who can play right back, left back and centre back. But he's most natural at centre back. So you would say, okay, you've got someone there who can play centre back already on £400 a week. Whilst you have above him here, the likes of Amir Holloway and Hayne straight away, who are also centre back options. I mean, he can play striker as well, which is always interesting to see. But is there any of these you probably cut ties with and go for some players that aren't going to cost you any money? Trying to go for this club, break down what players aren't really warranted of getting a wage at this point in your save. So, of course, going on to the mention of players there, we've mentioned about getting rid of some wages. Another thing you can do is go and grab yourself a senior affiliate. So, what you want to do at this point is click on the finances tab here, make a board request. You can go to networking and it will say senior affiliate. At this point, then you can go and speak to your board and request a senior affiliate. I will admit though, first day in the job, it's very unlikely they'll give you one in the first day in the job, but maybe a few months down the line, if you're looking good and doing strong, maybe come that second season, maybe we'll try for one right now. Uh, we should seek an affiliation, the suitable club, to enable us to sign good players on loan without the cost of their wages. Uh, please work with what you got available right now. So again, it's what happens normally when you're brand new into a new save. They will probably say no straight away. But if you're a year in, two years in, try then. Try and get a senior affiliate with a bigger side. You can get some players on loan from a bigger side. It's going to cost you absolutely nothing. So as you can see right now, we're looking at our finances right now. I've got a good overall balance here currently at Hereford, but the transfer budget is nothing there. We've got a transfer revenue of 30% only until we've made 2.7 million on transfers, which is quite a hefty fee to try and make when you're at this level. But there is a bit of money spare in the wage budget right now. There isn't a lot there. You've probably got £600 there spare to try and bring in possibly some free transfers or some loans. So for the option, of course, you go onto your scouting tab over here, players, players in range. And you can see currently right now, but we're only looking at players within the Vanarama, North and South areas. I mean, you can technically go as far as UK and Ireland just for one day, I'd say, and then change it back once you finish scouting those players. That is a little cheeky way of doing it. We can go on that. It says right now it's going to cost us a total of 120 grand per year. But if we revert back to it before the end of that day, so let's say yes right now, and then we will go back down then, of course. We can even go down to zero if we really wanted to. We can go through it, scout the players we can find right now. Loads of new players popping up for us straight away. And then at the end of the day, Back down to this quickly, cheekily, fresh yes, and there we go. No scouting budget being spent, and we've saved that money. And we can always transfer that scouting budget then over normally into a transfer budget once you've been here a few days. But we'll look at some players we can bring in now, of course. Uh, normally, interested in transfer, yes, we do need players who are interested in transferring to us. A contract status of an attached straight away. And now we can see a list of all the players who would be interested in coming to us who are available for free transfer. 678 players already. So that's quite a lot of players you need to narrow things down to. Now, one other thing you might want to try whilst looking for unattached players who are free agents is this. Players are also non-players. This means that they do more than one role. They can come in, they can be a member of staff for you, as well as being on the pitch for you. Looking at Casper here, if I approach to sign this guy right now, breakthrough prospect, that's fine. Lovely stuff. And straight away, he can be part-time, he can be a player, but he also works behind the scenes. You can do different roles for you. So you could be a player and a scout. You could be part of your coaching stuff as well. So you can get him in and do multiple jobs with this player. This saves your money then on your staff. So you're putting the money all into one player who can do multiple roles for you. So of course, another idea is of course, when you get to January 1st, you'll notice straight away, if you go down here and press six months left of contract, 
you will have a whole host of players whose contracts are running out on June 30 slash July 1st who will be available for free transfer. So again, we can get rid of this now. Look at this no more. We'll look for it in one year's time because, of course, in one year's time, these players will be running out. It's probably a little, a little over a year right now, so you're not going to get as many players. But these will be all players that have contracts running out within the next year. So these will end now, you can see here, on the 30th of May 2023. Within the next 12 months, these contracts are all going to be ending. These are players you can just keep an eye on. Start scouting now. Keep an eye on them. I mean, you could probably blag them for quite a cheap price if you've got a little bit of money to play with. If you've got no money, keep an eye on them. Keep scouting them. Keep attending games. It's something that you really, really want and think, you know what? Callum Jones. I really, really want Callum Jones here from Chelmsford. I'll go, go watch a few of their games. Keep making a point of saying in the press, going to the press here. You can talk to the press at any time and say, look, I'm interested in this player, declare interest here, transfer. And at that point, then you'll get an inbox message where you basically talk to the press and say to the press how much you want to sign this player. Keep doing this, keep passing it over and over and over. And then when his contract comes up in January 1st, it's going to run out in six months. You're one of the first clubs he's going to be looking at. Of course, if you're in the same league system, it won't happen straight away just like that. It will be a case of more end of the season, but even January 1st, their club might turn around and be like, well, he's not re-signing for us. Let's get him sold right now for pennies. So you can get in there and you can be the first one to grab him before anyone else does. So you're in pre-season then now, and there's another way of making some quick, easy money, and that is via friendlies. We've got a load of friendlies here, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through first. I'm going to cancel all these friendlies because I think there's a way we can make a lot more money from these friendlies. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this Friday here. What we're going to do is now at this point, we're going to put a league in place for these three days. And we're going to go through and choose some teams that can make us a lot of money. So, one for me normally is going to the Premier League and finding some of the big boys, his youth system. So, let's say Arsenal. We're going to propose a friendly to your under-21s team. Straight away, it's saying here it's going to cost us 24000 for a fee to be paid for the team. But an income of forty three grand can be made from that friendly. If we do that over the course of a couple of teams here, you can see how much money we can make. So, to move my head over out of the way just a little bit here, you can see now we have put in a league system in place here. Take on the Arsenal under 21s, Chelsea under 21s, and Tottenham Hotspur under 21s. It'd be a total fee to go out of 178,000 out to those clubs. But your profit boys, that's what you're making after that as well. So you're making a huge profit from these friendlies by doing this sort of thing in your game. And I mean, you can do one here, you can do one the following weekend, every weekend leading up to that first game of the season. Doing that, it's a couple hundred thousand straight away in your bank balance going forward for the upcoming season. That is an absolute cheat code and how to make some easy money in the lower leagues in Football Manager. So as you can see now, we've gone forward a few days now. You can see now, we do have a pre-season cup coming up now against Everton under 21s, Manchester United under 21s, and West Ham under 21s, which should make a nice little payday for the team playing those three games back to back over the course of a weekend. And they're all at home as well, of course. You're making the revenue from them games being in your home stadium. So a little perk there, something to try out and see how many of those you can fit in before the season starts. Join those winter breaks if you do have them in certain what league you're in, of course, as well. So, sort to keep an eye on to make those extra pennies count. So that's going to be it then. There's a few little hints and tips there about how to make some extra money whilst you're working in the lower leagues, depending if you're in England or whereabouts you are in the world. It's worth trying them out and it's worth trying to implement these into your games. But as always, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you are subscribing down below, hitting that like button and let me know down the bottom what lower league team are you managing right now in FM23? And if you've implemented any of these tricks, or if you know of any better tricks that we haven't mentioned within this video, for the next one of these we do in the future. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you again very, very soon.